Hello everyone and welcome to another exciting edition of Community Reports on Channels Television. I'm sure you're wondering where is Victoria? Well, I'm at a wedding holding in Lagos. Now you would know very well that for every traditional wedding and engagement ceremony there is the bride and the groom's family coming together now you need a mouthpiece to serve as a go-between between both families that those are the set of people we're looking at today they are called the alagas in the yoruba tradition and they're usually called the spokespersons for other traditions now the alaga dro and the alaga jokos are the ones that serve as the go-between uh, the mouthpiece, so to say, for both families. On this show today, we're talking to four Alaga Jokos and, you know, the wonderful role they play at engagement ceremonies. Welcome to the show. I'm Victoria Ido. Enjoy. Traditional weddings in Nigeria on all occasions show the diversity and richness of the Nigerian culture and style. Colorfully and lavishly planned, this event is accompanied by beautiful attires, dishes, blurring music and sophisticated accessories. The couple's family get the chance to unite and interact with each other with the help of spokespersons, usually called in Yoruba palance as Alaga. This celebration, usually moderated by two women, called the Alaga Joko, representing the bride's family, the Alaga Duro, representing the groom's family. Usually, Yoruba weddings begin with the arrival of the groom's family, brought in by the Alaga Duro. <laughs> Bisi Igwe is one of them. At this wedding, she is standing as the Alaga Duro. Her first job here is to usher in the groom's family. Bisi's job here is also to introduce the groom's family. And yes, the Alaga Joko, who is Fulusha Ogunjimi, is also on hand to receive them. Could you please rise? You are getting another sister to me. Could you please rise? Welcome each other. Let's have a bash. Fulusha Ogunjimi, who is the Alaga Joko, has been anchoring engagement ceremonies for over 30 years. When I've been to this for close to 30 years, November 2019, it will be 30 years. Well, two major reasons. Number one, I, I think I have passion for marriages. Secondly, some 20, 29, 30 years ago, I was privileged to attend an engagement program and I discovered that it was only very elderly women that officiate uh, traditional marriages. And they did it in a way that, um, while well, it was so good, but I believed then that I could do it better, maybe put spice, and for my age then, at least, maybe put some youthful touch. So I decided to make a difference, and that was why. With a lot of singing, dancing, and a full knowledge of the members of the bride's family, she runs through the family list. <laughs> Thank you. 
With no formal training, Folusha learned the ropes on the job. I read Yoruba at the University of Ife, not Obafemi Awolowo University, University of Ife. And my project was Ekun Yawo. So it's somehow related to what I do now. So when I got to Lagos, after my marriage, I was in London State. After my marriage, I, went, I came to Lagos. And for good 10 years, I was on temporary appointment with Lagos State Television. So there's this God-given destiny helper. We call her Mama Ewe. She was into this, an elderly woman too. So she just said, for this show, do you know you can do this to make extra income? And I was like, yes, I have passion for it. So okay, just come with me. And I followed her, and that was my second time of attending traditional marriage that was officiated that way. So I told her, I said, this is what I can do. She said, hmm, okay. And the second time I went out with her, coincidentally, fortunately for me, the Alagaidro did not come on time. In fact, she came 10, 15 minutes to the end of the program. So my wife just said, for sure you can do it, come on, be the Alagaidro. I was a little bit skeptical. But she said, don't worry. For everything you need to do, I will direct and cover up for you. And I started it, and that was it. A job here is not done as she ushers in the groom himself. And she hands him over to the Alaga Joko, who takes it up from there. With over 30 years to her belt, Mrs. Ogunjimi has a lot of experiences to share. When you have parents that are not together, maybe divorced or separated and they are not friendly, it brings headache to an alaga. The father doesn't, the, the father doesn't want the mother to attend. The mom is proving this child is mine. It's always a very horrible experience because you are in between the two. Of course, you have to pacify the father that is not ready to listen. And the mom, who's, who's, who is the biological mother and has the right to attend the child's uh, engagement. Sometimes you meet with an unfriendly alaga that may make the job very difficult for you. Sometimes you meet a family that is uh, under tension. Sometimes they are not even ready to listen to what people are saying, especially the very humble family that maybe go into borrowing to do the wedding. And you can see the, the woman will be sitting, not sure of the next thing to give the guests. As a lager, you have to calm them down and all that. And the very best, 
where you meet families that appreciate you, that are ready to listen to what you want. So many. Money, they say, is an important aspect of engagement ceremonies. Yoruba tradition about marriages demands that money will exchange hands, definitely. Even for the Yawolis that started it, that before, you, before they allow the groom's family into their compound, they must pay something. But the only thing that is not good about it is what we call a sheju. You don't overdo things. Well, the families should not make their lagas look like a beggar, and at the same time, their lagas should not, uh, do not uh, extort too much money from the There are some things you can do. Sometimes you even sing without asking. People appreciate you. So it's, uh, we need to balance it. But definitely there are some bad eggs. And thank God for the association of uh, Apuekon, that is the, the group of Alagas that are trying to correct all those things. Back in the days, the role of the Alaga used to be carried out by a family member. Now, a lot has changed. Well, Alaga started from the re Yoruba tradition, whereby a man or a woman would be in between the wife to be and the groom to be. You don't go, as a man, you don't go, you don't go straight to a woman to say, "I want to marry you." You will tell somebody who, who can put a word for you, auntie or uncle. I'm interested in this family. That woman or man will go there, make two or three. Uh, uh, do one or two things, find out about the family, do a little bit of research. Are they thieves? Do they have somebody that has a, an illness or infirmity? Are they good people? Is the guy himself somebody that will take care of his wife? Are the parents accommodating? After that, she will now go back to tell the parents of the groom-to-be, which we allow her to speak for the groom to the parents of the bride. So we call them Alarina. So that is the first stage of Alaga. After that, the Yahoo Lays started doing it. But all of them cannot speak at the same time. They can't talk at the same, at the, at the same time. So they now uh, allow whoever can speak better, can talk better, an orator, or somebody that we call uh, Entoba Be that is outspoken to do the talking. So by the time the Yawoles are welcoming the groom's family, maybe the Yawoles, the housewives, are ten, there must be somebody. She doesn't even have to be the oldest. She can even be the youngest, as long as she can talk very well. They allow her to talk on behalf of the family. So at a point, they now make her sit, maybe almost to the door, awaiting the arrival of the groom's family. So that immediately they come, she'll be the first to see them and say, why, why, why are you here? What do you want? So that's why they call them Alaga, because she sits on a separate seat awaiting the... Alaga, Ijoko. Ijoko, yes. Ijoko, that is sitting, awaiting. Idro is the one that will come and ask for a daughter's hand in marriage. You keep standing until you are offered a seat. So that, that was how it started. Until they start giving the woman, oh, you did very well. This is uh, your Kola Nuts. Kola Nuts as in money or kula not as in real kula not. Oh, one can actually do this to make money and that was how it started until it becomes something that everybody is doing. Learning from a 30-year wealth of experience, Folusha Ogunjimi tells us that a lot of training is needed to excel. Well, you train. Well, my own time, I didn't train for it. I did not train because then, 30 years ago is a long time. Then you could do so many things and get away with it. But now, people know what they want, especially the brides. Before now, brides don't interfere. It's about parents. And marriages is not about Yoruba to Yoruba. Now we have intertribal marriages between Nigerians and now Ghanaians, British, so you can't just jump into it. So you need to learn. And that was why some 10 years ago, I decided to have a school. People train them. 
but they, they train, most Alagas train locally. So I decided to have a school where things can be done and the needful will be done. To be an Alaga, first and foremost, you must be talented. You must be confident. You must be an orator. You must be of good character. You must be very humble. You must be accommodating. And you must be very, very careful, prayerful, and a woman or man of dignity. Koinsola Shibanjo has been an alaga for the past two years. She tells us her love for wedding has taken her this far. I, I love weddings. I just wanted to do something outside the ordinary, like things that ordinarily someone this young would not have loved to venture into. You're, you're laying a foundation for a new couple and you need to put them in prayers, make them a part of your life. Have a conversation with them, we get to know them, we get to be a part of them, make them happy, make their day joyous and speak into their lives. We pray for them, we put them into consideration, we put them into our prayers every time so that their foundation will not be faulty, their foundation will not be shaken. So it's not only about the wedding day, we have to follow up. You know, because sometimes we celebrate them after their weddings, we celebrate them when they're giving birth, their anniversaries, we, we just want to be a part of it. When anchoring multicultural weddings, a lot of learning is important. I'm Yoruba, but I represent the Isoko tribe of Delta State today. It's basically about being vast. You have to be vast. You have to know, know your onions, find out, carry out researches. So I, I stood in for the Gomes family, the Isoko family. I was able to carry them along, gesticulate with them, make them feel like I'm part of them. Definitely I'm not part of them, but I want to be part of them today. And um, it was wonderful. They loved everything about my presentation and all that. So basically, you just want to carry the entire family along. You have to go between, between the Gomes family and the Bright family. You have the spokesperson. So you say, say everything on their behalf, carry them along, make them happy, make their day joyous, and that's about it. Her work is not done until the groom arrives. With a lot of singing and dancing, drummers and backup singers are essential for smooth flow of the program. As a spokesperson, knowing the tribe you're speaking on their behalf is vital, which can only be gotten by proper research. You need to do research. You'll be asked questions. How do they greet in a kitty? Oh, greet us in a kitty language. You have to 
you see neighbors, you have neighbors everywhere, you have friends, you carry out researches and all of that. For instance, today, I called my friend in church, she's in the choir, I had to ask her, please remind me about some um, Isoko Urobo songs and everything. So you communicate with people. You do research, we have trainings, we have rehearsals. So you cannot just bump into this profession. It's not something you don't decide to do for one morning. You'll be embarrassed at the end of it because you don't know what you're going to do. You don't know what you're going there to meet. More dancing, more singing. Oluremi Akintola Samuel. Technically, Oluremi started in 2001, but she says she's been at it from her mother's womb. Okay, I'm, I've been doing this for a while. <laughs> I started out by myself in 2001, you know, but I've been doing it like this forever because I learned it from my mom. And so I've been doing it from my mother's womb. <laughs> With the idea of Alaga almost fading out, these professionals are out to rebrand the industry. I realized that um, a lot of times, a couple of times I've gone out with my mom and then I noticed that gradually people are beginning to um, tilt towards um, other culture than our traditional culture. So I realized that the Western culture is taking over our weddings and people are not, you know, looking forward to um, their traditional weddings. So I, 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 I thought about it that, okay, this is a need that needs to, you know, be met. And I, I, uh, I decided to, you know, raise the bar in engagement comparing, you know, by meeting, meeting the needs of, you know, both the old and the young. So how do you do that? Okay, so it's just like um, comparing the contemporary and, you know, the old things we always had in international weddings, you know. You know now people want to, people want hip-hop music, people want, you know, Afrobeats. They don't want the regular traditional songs or cultural songs. And so we, we just, you know, want to have a blend of And, you know, back in the day, we used to have older women who all they are concerned about traditional wedding is the parents. So now we have a blend of concern for the parents and also for the couple. So that they can also look back and then enjoy that day. No profession is without its challenges. As a young person, because in this industry, the industry is meant for older women. And you know, as I started out, you know, as a young person, I started out very early. I started out in my in my teenage years. You know, I used to go with my mom and. You know, for a very long time, people didn't allow me. And then because I have a small stature, people thinking that you are young, so you don't, you don't know what you're doing, you know, that you know, the, the industry is known for, well, known with older women. That's one. Two is that the challenges we're facing now is that a lot of people want the traditional culture to face out. The culture of making money and time wasting is an issue that is raised. That notion, she says, is wrong. I, I, a lot of people get alaga that are not professionals. You know, back in the days, the origin came from women, like the housewives, just volunteering to be the spokesperson for families. That's how the, you know, the industry came, that's how it came about the in industry. And so, um, a lot of times, people didn't see it as a professional industry that people would pay for somebody's time. People would, in fact, lately, I found that People pay MCs more than they do to Alaga because they just feel that it's the culture. You can just come and, you know, at the wedding, you have lots of people dashing you money and then at the end of the day, it's for you. So it's not because of time because back in the days, it used to be a whole day, traditional wedding. <laughs> Thank you.
With a lot of rebranding to be done in the industry, financial reward appears to be growing slowly. A marriage is not only the coming together of a bride and a groom, it's also the coming together of the whole family. Well, there's been a lot of dancing and singing. So if you want to become an alaga, you know exactly what you need to learn. You, know, have, you have to know a lot of songs and you have to dance very well and you have to be able to talk really, really well. Anyway, that will do it for us on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. If you missed any part of the show, you can check it on our YouTube channel. You can also send comments to the social media handles showing on your screen. I'm Victoria Ido. Until I see you again next week, to stay safe.